The Ink and Paint Club podcast is intended for mature audiences. These guys can't go by like three seconds without saying a swear, so, you know, listener discretion is advised. Attention! Attention! Hello, human stink beasts! That is right, it is I, Invader Zim, here to introduce the Ink and Paint Club podcast on this the 20th anniversary of Invader Zim! <laughs> 20 years. Excellent work, me! So, let us get on with this Ink and Paint Club podcast. But first, answer me this. Why was there bacon in the soap? A question I've been asking for 20 years. My business is done! You're listening to the Ink and Paint Club Podcast, a proud member of the Geekly Grind Podcast Network. Welcome, everyone, to the Ink and Paint Club Podcast. Uh, We've got a really good episode for you guys tonight. I've been waiting for this one. Uh, My name is Matt. Uh, Over there is my co-host and good friend, Kyle. Yep. And uh, look who decided to show up. He's back on the show. You know him. You love him. It's JD. Hey, guys. I'm back. Um, I'm going to be pretty honest. There's there was a lot of missing time the last two weeks. Um, th- there were some bright lights. I think there might have been some probing involved. But um, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> and uh jd was kind enough to allow me to uh, host the festivities for this episode because uh as you can already guess uh we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of invader zim um definitely want to at first give a shout out to uh, richard horvis for providing us for that amazing uh, intro um if you want to get your own uh, uh, uh voice greeting from him he's on cameo that was where i was able to procure that uh, voice clip so definitely go check him out on there um but yeah uh we're we're talking about zim and uh it's it couldn't be a more appropriate episode to be talking about it with uh because if i did all the counting correct and i really hope i did i'm pretty sure this is my 100th episode of the podcast Woo! uh if we take into account all the episodes i was on before i joined full time uh in october of 2019 i believe i did like 15 episodes before that so this sh- i'm pretty sure this is like my 100th episode but either way uh, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk That's about Zim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, God, I, like I said, I've I, I, ever since I put this on the schedule, I've just been waiting to talk about it. You know, I've rewatched through the show. I like I I haven't uh, touched any other stuff. I was kind of planning to before the episode, but like I now that I've rewatched through the show, like I'm going to be reading through all the comics. I'm going to be reading through the art book. I'm going to be looking through the commentaries on DVDs and stuff. But like I'm going to total zim mood now that the uh, 20th anniversary just recently passed on um on uh it was like uh, last tuesday i believe um we originally uh or not originally we we talked about uh zim before on the podcast that was uh back when enter the florpus came out um i was a guest then um and i think that might have been like my might have been like my 10th episode or something that Maybe. wasn't that was it was shortly before I joined full time because I think I did like two other episodes after that and then I joined. But um yeah, uh we, we talked about Zim then. Um but now we're talking about the actual show proper. Uh because you know, as as great as a movie is, um, and I definitely want to rewatch it uh, when we're done recording here. Um the show is where it all started, and uh there's definitely a lot of uh stuff to talk about here. So um yeah, I mean, as far as you guys go, like, uh, you know, your history with the show, like, you know, did you, uh, were you anticipating it when, you know, the commercials came on or did you just kind of come across it like one day on television and you're just like, were you awestruck at what you were seeing or uh, how to go? So I do remember when this show came out. Um, like, I, I, I definitely remember, like, I remember when the first SpongeBob came out. I remember when this and Fairly Odd Parents came out on the same day. Like I, I remember that e- that evening. Um, but like I don't like I, I don't remember really being into Zim at the time. I, I just don't think it was my brand of humor at the time, which is weird uh, because obviously a lot of us were in that kind of like 
lol random uh you know kind of <laughs> pseudo goth phase in that in the early 2000s there um so it really wasn't until uh i feel like the show was over and like re-airing on nicktoons that i really like sat down and watched the entire thing and um no i mean i, I love this show now <laughs> Yeah, with enough time removed from it, like I feel like, because there's a certain stigma around Zim, like around that time, you were either like you were a massive fan of it, or you were annoyed at the massive fans of it because they didn't shut the fuck up about you know quoting it and stuff. So yeah, that was me. <laughs> uh, how about you, Kyle? Well, the LOL random humor. I want to bring that up a little bit later. So sure, stick a pin in that. Remember the ham on that. Um, <laughs> it'll come up again later um no i remember seeing commercials for it and just being hyped as shit because it was uh it was unique compared to everything else i mean just from commercials you can tell uh art style is different just the color choice is different uh it was just completely different from everything else on the air and definitely different from uh stuff that was on nickelodeon at the time so I was super stoked for it. And I do remember watching the uh, first episode on, on air and all that kind of stuff. So I liked it. I think the, uh, the humor and art gelled well. It, uh, I mean, like literally everybody else, it brought me to uh, his other work, Jonan's other work and stuff. So I yeah. liked it. I, I followed the whole series. It, it was good. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely, like, especially on the note of it being, like, uh, completely different from, you know, anything else. Like, even now, like, there's not really any other show like Invader Zim. Like, it's just, it's such, like, a a, a, a melting pot of, like, different, like, uh, just, like, a, a stuff that, you know, no other cartoons have, you know, attempted to do or and since. And, like, um on the note of like it being completely different because I, yeah, like around that time, like, you know, uh, uh, late nineties, like early two thousands, Nickelodeon. I mean, it was primarily dominated by like classy Supo stuff. I mean, you got like, you know, you got your Rugrats, you got your, you know, um, you know, rocket power is told by ginger, um, you know, it's fucking what all that. Berries? <laughs> what thornberries. Yeah. Like, I damn, we're, the- we're, we're all four of those shows on at the same time. I feel like they must have. It definitely felt felt like it was. Like I'm Damn. sure. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say around that time there was like Catch Scratch, the X's. It wasn't like the best kind of stuff on at that time. Well, not like when Zim was airing. At least not like the initial um, airing that like before. Oh, I mean, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that later because the the airing history on the show is definitely something worth bringing up too. Um. But yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's such a unique show. Like, uh, and yeah, like you mentioned, it was definitely like, um, it was definitely, uh, a, a window into like a larger sort of like, uh, you know, indie world of like, you know, comics and like, you know, music and stuff that, you know, I was not aware of up until the show came out. Cause you know, once that show hit and then like, you know, all these, you know, fan communities and stuff are popping up online for the show. And like, you know, Oh, who's Joan and Vasquez? You know, he's the creator of the show. He worked on like all these comics, you know, this is the music that, you know, he's listened to like, you know, uh, I discovered like mindless self-indulgence through him because, you know, he, he directed a video for them. Uh, I I, I just want to, I just want to say up front, I want to know what executive looked at Jonan's comics, which I I've read, squee and johnny the homicidal maniac i just want to see i just want to know which executive looked at that and I'm like yeah let's let's give this guy a kid show uh well, i believe the executive's name was mary harrington actually oh, if yeah. i remember right i, think well, I remember before zim he did have some sort of following with just his comic work it yeah wasn't just like out of the blue kind of thing definitely not no i like he definitely because by the time zim came out he he had already done all the issues for yeah for johnny the homicidal maniac and squee and then like uh i think like the the first two filler bunny books were out there the two issues of i feel sick um bad art collection um all that stuff's like you know was stuff before zim ever came out um then yeah i I think it was specifically i think it was that executive read squee and got then said like you know you know this this uh <laughs> this weirdo might be able to make a good kids show um and of course joan you know doesn't have 
you know, an experience of working animation. He has an experience of working comics. So, um, bringing that sort of sensibility over to making uh, a cartoon, like, and you can definitely, it's evident in the style of the show. There's like a lot of like strong black outlines and, you know, action lines and like, you know, just the way everything's stylized, you know, the backgrounds and everything. Like it's as far as, um, as far as uh, shows being, um, well, I guess it's not technically adapted from, you know, a comic, but I mean, you know, the overall style sensibility of it is, you know, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no, I, I loved fucking Jonan's comics too. Like uh, reading all that stuff after, uh, after Zim had came, come out just to see like that sense of humor, um, sort of, uh, bolstered by like the more adult tones of like, and, you know, jokes and stuff of, you know, Johnny and Squee and stuff and like, uh, and filler bunny. And, uh, you know, like the, the comic within a comic for Johnny was a happy noodle boy, like all that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, um, uh, I still have all my original issues. I've been meaning to, um, I've been meaning to buy the, uh, the, the trades of those. Cause I've been wanting to reread them again, especially now, like I said, I'm going to definitely read through all the, uh, the Zim comics that have uh, come out since the can- uh, cancellation of the show. The comics started coming out in, um, I mean, the Zim comic books have been coming out since like 2015, and I think they're just ending production on them now that the 20th anniversary has passed. I think Joan is working on like a final issue because they did like 50 issues of the comic, and then they did like four quarterly issues, and then they're doing like a finale of it. That's what I read earlier. Yeah, I, I really need to to read those at some point. But um, yeah, I I had the um, the the Johnny and Squee. Uh, trade that they put out um and I, I i i think i might have actually sold those a while back and i kind of feel bad if i did um if i did i really should rebuy those yeah um but yeah no it's 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 weird watching zim and then reading his old comics because it, it's like you could definitely see the like the similarity between the two, like you can see the you DNA. Could, you, you could definitely tell that they're done by the same person, but it's it's such it's also so very different in tone. Uh, that it's just it's it's very interesting. It's it's very much an acquired taste, as much as Zim is. Um, yeah, t- just, totally, totally. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then of course there was you know just the yeah like I I mentioned the fan communities earlier really like um yeah this is absolutely like the first major show that i was like um involved in like you know looking up stuff online for like uh i, I talked about this in that enter the floor episode but you know it's been like two years so nobody's you know <laughs> gonna remember any of that shit so wow. I'm, definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna retell some old stories from that um there was two specific websites uh, that eventually joined forces eventually, but um, it was gerd.n3.net and then there was uh, a, a room with a moose. And those were the two like big uh, Zim fan sites uh, around at the time. And uh, just being able to uh, see, you know, all the production images and like, you know, talk with other fans and, you know, um, there's actually one other website too. Uh, it's it's uh, long defunct, uh, along with those websites, well by now. But there was uh, a, a site called Cybercat.com. It was like S I B E R K A T, and um, it wasn't just Zim, but uh, a large port of the portion of the website was dedicated to uh, sound clips from Zim. Uh, hmm. They also did like Simpsons and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I mentioned this shortly before we started recording. But a lot of my and we have to keep in mind the time frame for this because, you know, Zim, of course, uh, the show proper debuted in like 2001 and uh, ran until uh, like 2003. And then like some of the, the episodes that they were able to finish for season two, which is only like six episodes, didn't air on uh, television until like Nicktoons Network was a thing. And then they they aired them there. Um, they ended up on the DVDs some a couple of years before that. But uh, um yeah, for a long time, like, you know, for like the, the pilot episode and for those uh those uh, six episodes, I was mostly just used to listening obsessively to the sound clips and looking at like still images for them over and over and just imagining what the whole episodes were like. Um and uh yeah, and it just even with like the clips from like the regular episodes, like I remembered I I I made themes on like windows xp that were entirely uh replaced all the sounds of like just a uh, zim 
voice clips and sound effects and like theme, <laughs> like all the windows and like replace the backgrounds and everything. Like I was way Jeez. into it. Like, yeah, no, this is like, I was to say that I was obsessive about the show is definitely like an understatement, but like I knew when to kind of, you know, keep it on a down low. Like I, I wasn't like one of those kids in school that was overly, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, I, I didn't make that show like my my whole personality. Like I did wear, you know, shirts and stuff, but I, I wasn't quoting that stuff like out loud to like strangers or anything. Like you know, uh, but, you know, with my friends and stuff because you know they like the show too. But so you know. Matt, what you're saying is you didn't go around screaming waffles. All- yeah, no, that wasn't something that that I did. Like <laughs> that was definitely not. Uh, yeah, like, like I said, it's you know, like it, as 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 much as I love the show and the series and stuff, there is a certain stigma about the fan base that I'm glad that I never truly um, not subscribed to, but it's something that I never truly gave into. Like, cause I could have totally, you know, what was it? Um, <laughs> You see that uh, phrase thrown around a lot online nowadays. It's like, uh, I am cringe, but I am free. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, to, and to not have that self-awareness definitely would have. Uh, yeah. It's uh I would have been Look, something else. We, we, I'm sure at some point in our life we all engage in some version of cringe, but I'm glad to hear that variety. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you know a bunch of fan stuff. Um, do you remember a website? It was, I think it was called like uh, Invader Buzzy or something. No, but uh, I remember you mentioning that it was like you, you downloaded like episodes and like stuff that was uh like not even because the dvds weren't around at the time but it's all stuff like you know the production stuff uh yeah it was like you could download the full episodes you know it's funny like back like uh early internet download a full episode in like two hours <laughs> i mean it was awesome to have that before the dvds were out yeah um i never I never really had internet that good until like much later in my life. But I think the, the only episode of Zim that I ever saw, like uh, not on televised, like around that time was um, I, my uncle was really into um, like uh, Kazaa and like Napster and all that shit. And so I remember one day um, I was, cause he, he used to live with my grandma and uh, I used to spend summers over at my grandma's house. And one day he like pulled me into his room because he had an episode of uh, a Zim on there. And I was like, Oh my God, how did you get this? Like, I was so surprised because of course, you know, back then you had to just wait until, you know, it was on television. And like, you know, if you had TV guide, then you know, the episodes coming up, but like, yeah, I think he had, it was like battle of the planets, I think. And the only reason why that he downloaded it is because he accidentally downloaded it thinking it was, um, some old anime that also had the same name called battle of the planets or something like that. <laughs> Fucking gacha man. Or got, yeah. Okay. There you go. So, it was yeah. That. Um, but yeah, it's so, so awestruck about it. Um, and shit. Yeah. That's definitely something worth noting is, uh, yeah, I, I, I had like loads of tapes of just recording Zim too. Like I, from what I've been told by my parents, apparently one of the, my, their very earliest memories of me is that I learned how to program, not for Zim specifically, but one of the things I did when I was much younger than them was I learned how to program a VCR. Um, oh, damn. When I was like four or five or something, I guess, um, because I used to, uh, uh, Cause I mean, power Rangers was, you know, the early nineties. That was, if we were talking about like our very first fandoms, that's probably like, you know, my very first one. And that kind of led into skills that I reserved for later <laughs> for Zim. Yeah, yeah. I just, I distinctly remember, uh, I was recording. I think it was, what's the name of the episode? Uh, bestest friend or something. It's the one with like Keith. Um, and I remember like my, I, I had a, the tape I was recording on like ran out like halfway through. And I remember like freaking out and like, I, I scurried out of my room and I was like, yelling to my mom, like I-, I need a blank tape. I need a blank tape or something. And I was like, I'm missing the episode. I need a blank tape. <laughs> and she gave me like a VHS tape of something that she had already recorded. Like it was like some like thing of commercials or something. And I recorded over it and I felt really bad afterward. And I, I made sure I had extra tapes after that, but that's definitely a vivid uh, Zen memory I had. Um, yeah, you know, sorry, I'm just like I'm reminiscing because, like I said, I mean, this is 
such like a, a major part of my life. Like, you know, it's, I don't want to say like, you know, it, it was it was everything to me, but I mean, it's its influence was very strong. I mean, just even down to like, it definitely it, it dictated like a large part of my life. So it's it's just one of those things that I could absolutely talk about forever on like you know we always make the joke like i'm the only one that ever takes notes on this show but like i <laughs> I, 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 I didn't need to take any notes for this episode because i could just like i could just talk about it just you know a string of consciousness like for you know a couple hours like not that we're gonna you know sit everyone through all my inane fan bullshit for <laughs> for that amount of time believe but. you me we could make it happen but we'll <laughs> spare you all right but yeah um you know actually just talking about the show proper i mean yeah that was okay actually th- there's one more story <laughs> okay and, and i did talk about it on the floor plus episode but i think it's funny enough to bring up again um when yeah when the show officially premiered yeah like you were saying because when the show premiered it premiered with uh fairly odd parents mm-hmm. which is also celebrating you know it's 20th this year and you know but you know that's which whatever. look zim <laughs> Zim at least had the luxury of going out before it got a little long in the tooth. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, yeah, Fairly Odd Parents. Like, is it is it still running? Is no, it... it it ended last year, I think. Well, shit. There you go. I mean, it, if it only ended last year, and I think what they went through. <sighs> it no, sorry, it ended in <laughs> uh, seventeen. Oh, okay. That's still fairly recent. Fairly recent, though. but yeah. Uh, I mean... Fairly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean... Yeah, that's definitely, like, it, something to think about. Just, like, the two shows premiered at the same time, and then you got Zim, who, like, you know, got cancelled just a few years after its inception, and then, yeah, Fairly Odd Parents went on until 2017, and people remember zim way more fondly because of that like you know it turned into like you know a cult classic well, whereas i think i think the creator is a little more respectable <laughs> yeah it was just hilarious because like you know when you go back in the day like to when the shows came out like you know uh butch hartman you know had pedigree and like you know working on you know other classic cartoons you know like uh Look, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest like i used to very much say that like butch hartman was a like an artistic inspiration for me. Um, I later found out that the inspiration I was taking from him was more of Steven Silver, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I liked Hartman's stuff for the most part. Um, Steven yeah, Silver I, is to Butch Hartman as uh, Bill Finger is to Bob Kane for Batman. There you go. There you go. It's a yeah. probably apt comparison. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's, it's at least nice that Zim, for as short lived as it was, at least got to like maintain its quality. And even when it came back for the movie uh, a couple years ago, like you know, even that it was like it, it, it like fit per- almost perfectly in with the the show, like without missing a beat. So yeah, like even though it's under like you know a new coat of paint, you know, the, it, and it's more in line with kind of like how the comic looks. Like you know, it's still. Of- exact same you know jokes and writing style and stuff it's like yeah they didn't people did me. not like how it looked the i movie. personally I, I enjoyed it i but i think that was because i was familiar with the comics too so i was already kind of adjusted to it yeah but no, um, i remember there was a lot of hate for the visual style but for the most part it was the same i think a lot of people did probably expect it to look exactly like it did just because um static cling the the rocco uh special like looked so close to like what the original looked like right like i'm I pretty sure it looked, it looked more like joe murray style than the actual show to me right uh yeah okay i guess that's not something i can personally attest to just because rocco's you know not one of those shows that i have watched as you know i've I watched zim a lot more so i have a more closer comparison point on that Oof. Um, well, no, I mean, fucking, I love Rocco. Like, I watched tons of Rocco back in the day, but, uh, well, that's one of those shows. It has, it's like all on DVD, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. No, maybe I'll look into getting those because I, I was making a comment before we recorded that, um, I rewatched 
Zim on the the Media Blasters DVDs that came out like in 2004, 2005. Like they came, you know, in the house, you know, the 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 cardboard thing that looks like the house and everything. Um, and I was a little worried because, like, I, I did want to watch them on streaming just because, you know, I figured you know, it would be like a high quality version of it. Um, but like the last I checked, it was on Hulu, and then it wasn't on there, so I figured, oh, okay, it's probably going to be you know Paramount Plus because that's where all the yeah, next shit ends up. And yeah. so I was like. You know, I haven't watched the DVDs since, you know, they came out. I haven't watched the show back to front since the DVDs came out. I've seen, you know, I've watched Zim since then, but, you know, it's just, you know, random episodes here and there. But, you know, yes. if you're watching the DVDs, you know, it's great quality. Like, you know, especially I watched it on, like, my PS5. So I think, you know, definitely, you know, it's got 4K Blu-ray technology. So I know it, like, upscales, you know, stuff below 4K. So, right. um, yeah, it looked pretty decent. So, you know, it's kind of gotten me wanting to... um go and uh, uh purchase some other you know cartoons that i really enjoy on dvd now like i've already got some ideas of what to look into so maybe yeah. rocco will be one of those and i'll uh we'll watch through that soon there you go well i mean if i if i can say anything about zim is that it for as short-lived as it was it definitely left a lasting impression um i mean i i think we could pretty fairly say that hot topic owes a lot of its uh longevity uh to zim <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i mean shit like who didn't uh who didn't fucking buy merchandise from hot topic back in the day like it was funny i was uh yeah. over at my parents house yesterday and i was uh i'm still moving uh, shit into my my new house and uh i came across like two uh like sweat bands like you know wristbands that had mm-hmm. uh there's the image of like Gur on one in his dog suit and then on the other one there's the image of like uh zim and his human disguise shaking a, a zim doll that i know comes from uh comes from one of the comics that uh, joan had made for nick magazine like oh, i know geez. the exact thing it came from and then there was also like a, a leather wallet in there that had like the the logo and like gur on it like um and then yeah i can i can remember like all the shirts i had too like i i must have had at least like four or five zim shirts and then like i also had I had a squeeze shirt and I also had a, a Johnny, the homicidal maniac shirt as well. I should have had a happy noodle boy shirt too. And I, yeah, no, I must've, Maybe you know, just all the Joan and shit. Like, you know, yeah. Just, just way and, into it. and now thinking about it, like Zim is one of those things where I feel like it could have only been made when it was. Cause Zim was made in just like that height of like a uh, dark industrial, uh sensibilities like post matrix uh, but pre 911 <laughs> right so no i mean that's a legit thing cuz i mean once you know cuz that happened during the show's you know lifetime and that definitely sort of changed a lot of things for you know companies as far as like you know the kind of content they were producing mm-hmm. um and especially in zim's case because i think the week that that happened they were they were going to air, uh, there's an episode called uh, Door to Door where uh, Zim's like, uh, you know, there's yeah. can- selling candy bars. And there's an epi- there's a, a, a scene in that episode that shows like, you know, buildings collapsing and stuff. And so, you know, it was only like a few days before that was about to air. And they fucking pulled that and the accompanying episode. Um, and they didn't air them until like, I think six or eight months later because they had to like edit that. They had to completely redo that scene. Um, and it's weird because they Nickelodeon accidentally aired the original version of that scene like much later. And so that's how we have an idea of what the original scene looked like. You can find it like on YouTube. Um, that's like, I've, I've watched both of them and I can't even really tell much of a difference, honestly. There's like at least like five seconds of like a difference in there, like from what I saw. Um, yeah. yeah, like I said, it's just, you know, it, it is what it is. But yeah, no, it's, it's, Zim is definitely no stranger to like, you know, censorship and stuff. They they, they were changing stuff all the time. Um, you know, well, and, and not even specific. That isn't that a reason why it got canceled? Because of censorship and all this kind of shit? It, nobody's ever really been able to say exactly why Zim got canceled. But I mean, there's, of course, like major reasons that could be viewed as to why it got canceled one of them was definitely like you know content concerns because you know like i said in a post 9 11 world that's not a show like zim was not something that nickelodeon wanted to produce um the other thing was um just budgetary concerns because um 
it, producing Zim was such an expensive venture for like Nickelodeon because of like all the CG that they're using on that show. Um, yeah, that's which is, early 2000s, so CG was still expensive. It was way expensive. Um, now everybody does CG. And now, yeah, but even Nickelodeon, like, you know, that we weren't far off from getting like full CG shows. Like, I think, uh, what was it? Jimmy Neutron must have came out like around that That'll time, like, like 2003 or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was down to that, or like the, the, I've always heard ratings thrown around too. But that that's definitely due to like what I was saying earlier, like its airing schedule. Because originally Nick's whole deal with like even creating Zim in the first place was because they were wanting to do like a whole block of uh, shows that are kind of skewed more towards like an you know older kids and stuff. But well, I remember uh, at, at the time they had a block. It was called like Guts or some dumb shit like that. Was games, game in sports or something. I don't fucking know. But, uh, the, the, the channel. Well, they, yeah, they had Nick, okay. Nick Gas. It was where they ho- ho- uh, housed all their um, uh, the game I'm shows. The game some, shows, yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of something different, but it was Invader Zim, and I remember that it had Men in Black too. Was being shown with Invader Zim. Huh. <laughs> that was a show that was like fucking off the air for ever. So it was kind of weird that they were uh, putting them together, but they pretty much made like an action block in a sense. Right. And they had to pair it up with a show that had been, you know, done for like some years. And that was kind of what I was getting to was they had originally wanted to do like a block of like completely new shows in that sort of age bracket. But uh, I guess they got cold feet about it. And so Zim was the only one that they had. And they of course didn't really have any other of their original because men in black was not made for Nickelodeon. I think that was made for, That was made for like what Fox Kids or Kids WB? Oh wait, yeah. the, the show Men in Black. Yeah. Oh, show yeah. uh, Men in Black. The series was on um, Kids WB. Okay, so um, yeah, but I watched you know. the hell out of that show. Uh, yeah, so Zim was just co- sort of. Uh, uh, I was reading specifically; it was like sandwiched in between like uh, uh, Rocket Power and like uh, uh, Rugrats. Uh, and it's like just such a weird place to be like, you know, and of course they were, they were constantly moving. It's like, you know, air time and days and stuff. Like, I think originally it was like, like 9 PM on Fridays. And then they were just completely moving into just like blocks, like during the day and stuff. And like, yeah. So like, you know, in certain instances like that, like, you know, yeah, of course ratings are going to be, you know, awful yeah. because you're not <laughs> keeping a consistent, you know, schedule for your show. Like I'm about to say guaranteed way to kill a show is keep, the time slot and don't tell anybody yeah absolutely i remember around that time it was the same time for uh adult party and all of uh spikes cartoons to come out oh and god was there in. right shit i guess i would have been happy around that time yeah because adult party cartoon came out what 2002 2003 i think so yeah and that was back on yeah well no it, i don't even think it was spike tv yet i think it was it was it was the new TNN, I think, wasn't it? Ooh, I think so. Because this was around the time when it was like Gary the Rat, Stripperella, all that right, shit right. was going on. Oh my god, I, 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 I remember Stripperella, but like I had totally forgotten about Gary the Rat. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, that's just the type of content that was getting like produced around that time. Like you know, it's just uh, yeah, it's wild. Um. Yeah, and I was reading somebody talking about how, you know, Invader Zim was, like, not far off from these, you know, companies that are mostly well-known for doing, like, kids con- kind of branching out into more, like, adult stuff. I mean, you know, Zim was done, like, in 2003, but, I mean, it was only, like, I think, like, seven years later, we started getting shows like, you know, Adventure Time and, like, regular show and stuff, stuff that kind of, like, skewed more towards, like, you know, kind of, like, older audiences and stuff. Maybe not initially, but, like, they kind of became those types of shows. Man, imagine, imagine if uh, Nickelodeon actually did pick up a gentry time for their action blocks. They, they fucking invested dollars into making an ass-kicking machine, and they used it every day that they found out that Cartoon Network <laughs> picked up the rights for Adventure Time. Yeah. They must have just fucking hated themselves so badly for passing up on it. I wonder how different it would have been. That would have been weird. I honestly feel like it would have been... like so watered down compared to what it was on the Network because it wouldn't I have just, lasted this long for sure. Oh no. 
No, for sure. Because I feel like Cartoon Network got into a spot there when all I, those shows were coming out where they were allowing the shows to be a little more creator driven, a little weirder. So, oh, I don't think it would have been uh, as woke. I think that, that might too, have been yeah. a good thing. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, yeah, because this is still a problem that Nick like has today too. Because I mean, like, you know, you look at like the body of Nickelodeon's work, and I mean, the only thing that they really have to show for it is that SpongeBob is still in the air, a show that they, you know, initially came out in 1999 is still going, and the only other show that has more than like a couple seasons under its belt is uh, Loud House. That for some reason <laughs> that's the one that like people like really made popular because i mean that one's you know they got tons of se- uh, seasons now it's got a spin-off um even spongebob didn't have any spin-offs until just you know recently you know after you know steven hillenberg died we started you know started fucking whore as the as, fuck out of that show yeah no not More even so. like yeah the body was not even cold before they started talking about fucking camp coral man it sucked um I don't expect us to <laughs> talk about that one either. I don't think anyone on the show has I, okay. an interest. My, my thoughts on Camp Coral. I watched half of the first episode and stopped. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that bad, huh? I, it was just insufferable. Yeah, God, I bet. Um, but yeah, I mean, just anything else that Nick's like, tried to do since then, I mean, they just they, they, they don't have any faith like in their in their shows they would much rather basically since the cg turtle show went off the air i have not watched anything from nick was rise of the teenage mutant ninja turtles was that on nick proper or was that like on nicktoons okay i think i think it was on nick proper i mean it was a nickelodeon production at least but um yeah that's another show that they ended up canceling only like a couple seasons in too and like people really love that show, like you know, and it's the same for um for like glitch text. Like that one didn't air on Nickelodeon proper, even though I'm pretty sure it was supposed to before it got you know the uh the streaming rights got bought up by Netflix or whatever. But mm-hmm. I, I don't imagine that we're gonna get any more of that just because Nick just <laughs> they would they would rather just I can make more of these shows that have gone on forever. And I, I, I forgot, I neglected to mention Fairly Odd Parents alongside SpongeBob and uh, Loud House, but you know, that, that is gone Nick, now. But I mean, you know, 2017 is still fairly recent. Nick just focuses more on uh, the live action sitcoms more than animation. That's kind of how it's always been. After, yeah. after the initial Nicktoons lineup, they've always put animation in the backseat, in a sense. Right, because I mean, I imagine the live action stuff's like way cheaper for them to, you know. Nick, Nick is basically pulling a Disney from ten years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, at, at least to Cartoon Network's credit, like you know, they went through a period there where they did attempt a live action, and I think they are going to try to attempt it again, but not like on the scale that they were trying to back no. like in the mid two thousands. What said like, it's going to be on streaming services instead of like the actual channel yeah because i would say that you know as far as producing cartoons you know cartoon networks you know produced a lot of cartoons but it's greatest sin is like how it's actually scheduling them on television because the only you know you always see on twitter like all the the uh, the schedules and it's always predominantly dominated by uh reruns of amazing world of gumball and uh, teen titans go yeah even though you know they have all these others and that's the kind of the good thing about streaming becoming as big as it has is that you know a lot of these shows that they can make now can just go straight to there and then they can more they can more fine-tune kind of like the audiences that they're trying to go for for those shows and stuff kind of like um uh uh, like infinity train Mm -hmm. which is unfortunately another show that's you know uh they they confirm season four is happening but it's going to be the last season and i think you know it's just, you know, one of those things that's, you know, it's just kind of expected by now. <laughs> it's hard for them to, uh, you know, hold on to a show as long as they held on to, like, you know, Adventure Time, a regular show, or Gumball now, because, you know, there's all stuff that got greenlit, you know, back in a different time. Um, yeah. But I think we got a little bit off topic, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know it's all definitely related, you know, like Zim was a, was a victim of of just, you know, that the same exact type of shit. And it was like, you know, m- you know, way before 
all, any of the stuff that we were just mentioning. Like, you know, it's just the way that it is. It's how it's always been. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but but no, like, you, like, like you said, though, I mean, that uh, Zim might, if it had gone on, you know, for as long as like fairly odd parents, it probably would not, it, it's as unique a show as it is. If it had gone on for that long, it's probably would not be viewed as favorably as it is now. And honestly, I kind of feel like Zim's just sense, like style and sense of humor and stuff. I feel like it was never meant to be something that like would go on forever. It definitely felt like something that was fu- that was meant to be finite. Um, I mean, not definitely not as short as it got, but like I could not see Zim running for like. 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeremy Snow here, owner and editor-in-chief of The Geekly Grind. I'm interrupting your awesome, regularly scheduled programming to ensure that you know about our Geekly Grind podcast network, of which this show is a treasured member of. If you haven't had a chance to check out our site, you can do so at www.thegeeklygrind.com. And while you're there, check out the other members of our steadily growing podcast family, including the anime-centric Blake and Spencer Get Jumped, discovering new heroes and comic book keepers with Chris and Lance, exploring the vast universe of geekdom with Geek Exploration, or, of course, appreciating animation's finer details with the Ink and Paint Club. Escape your weekly grind at the Geekly Grind. But, I mean, like, you know, at least, you know, I would have liked them to have completed season two and then potentially, like, season three. Like, again, this is, like, you know, I, I went and I looked through like plots that they had, you know, out and, you know, for episodes that they never got to produce and like to see like kind of where the larger plot of the show is going. And well, you know. well, on the DVD, isn't uh, isn't there just like a few episodes that are just storyboards? They never got animated, but those like it's just storyboarded and voiced and all that. No. So it's not storyboards, but it's. um it's uh, the audio tracks they had recorded Mm -hmm. uh, they had recorded six episodes and uh, those are on the special features disc that uh, came with the, the box set that looks like Zim's house. Now Uh, I'm just surprised in this day and age of like independent animator. One, at least to my knowledge has attempted to reanimate those episodes. I remember back in the early 2000s there was definitely people wanting to uh, uh reanimate there's an episode called uh the trial um and that was like a big like uh, had ramifications like on the larger uh you know plot of the show and i remember there was like and this was pre like youtube and stuff so this was like i imagine a lot harder to uh uh get a bunch of people together to like uh make this sort of thing and i just remember like reading you know the production updates and that sort of thing and you know like a lot of projects back in the day where you know uh being a, being a hold of like people and like you know that sort of thing was a lot harder like you know i i don't imagine it ever saw you know completion but yeah no, i mean nowadays you know you see stuff on youtube like you know like reanimated for like you know episodes of television shows or like even whole ass movies like you know You've got um, like 3GI, like, you know, completely, you know, completely redid all of Shrek, like, you know, with a bunch of different animators. Right. Or you've got like, you know, people out there redoing like, you know, uh, the Dover Boys or like uh, <laughs> there's one yeah. I saw like in December, the, the uh, a group of animators got together and redid the uh, Christmas special for like Chowder and um, yeah, just that sort of thing. Um, well, I'm I just saying, like, I, I, I'm not saying so much like, we need to get one of these reanimated projects where like every animator takes a scene and does it in their own style. I honestly feel like in this day and age, we could get people to completely in the style, of the old show animate those, those audio only episodes. Like, I feel like that is something that is ca- capable of doing. Not me personally. Cause I can't animate for shit. Um, but right. come on come on guys let's let's, let's get that going <laughs> i'm sure if you look deep enough on youtube there's people you know working on that type of thing um, but yeah i mean you know even if it's not happening now that doesn't mean it can't happen in the future it's true 
It's especially with the, especially with the renewed interest in the show, you know, like we said, you know, Enter the Florbus came out in 2019, and I imagine that that attracted like a lot of new fans for the show that weren't familiar with, you know, this show that lasted for like two years back on Nickelodeon. Like, you know, <laughs> of course, you know, it's like a cult classic to people that watched it back then, but I imagine, you know, for people that didn't grow up with the show, it's probably like it might be viewed as like you know this strange thing. Like, you know, there's definitely like stuff now that took influence from that entire you know uh era of you know dude you know how like, much of, you know how much deviant art is just like invader zim style or like jonan's style of of drawing <laughs> deviant art owes its whole yeah like existence to uh being around at the same time that like zim was a thing <laughs> more or less man <laughs> so that ham thing i mentioned earlier right <clears throat> <laughs> I was gonna say, I fucking swear, um, just Jonathan's work fucking ruined a generation of kids. <laughs> that's probably that's probably a fair thing to say. And I'm not saying that with the content or whatever. I'm just saying like, you ha- you have Jonathan who has a unique style, a unique sense of humor, and all this stuff, and then you have just a generation of kids that are basically picked it up like you said earlier basically built their personality around that yeah <laughs> to me it's it is a little fucking sad because yeah it's just playing copycat in a sense but you have kids going around like uh you know katie the doom penguin <laughs> <laughs> stuff like this that you see online and holds up fucking, spork yeah um all that stuff was so uh, uniquely him, and that's why it's like uh, around the internet around that time, it was just almost insufferable because that was uh, a lot of people. You had the fan characters and stuff. I mean, I'm sure people still to this day do fan characters, and like that's why you were saying uh, it's made a big impact, you know, to, di- to this day, it still holds up, but um, yeah, it's just fucking wild. But I remember around this time that this was airing, the two most insufferable fandoms was Invader Zim and the original Teen Titans, which I would say are still two of the most insufferable <laughs> fandoms <laughs> around. Because you have those people still bitching about Teen Titans Go to this day. And then you still have people doing the LOL random shit. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's what is it the saying? Uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. More or less. Yeah. Yep. And um, yeah, no, it's just it's it's wild. Um, no, although you're talking about like fan characters and stuff, um, I, I I don't think I mentioned this in the Florpus episode, but um, my online handle that I use, Space Boy, um, that is directly like back when the show came out, my online handle was invader MB because I didn't know how to come up with like an original name. So I just used my initials. Sure. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, my, I had an OC that was, you know, an alien and stuff. And that started out like that. Um, once I got into like high school, of course, you know, I still loved the show, but I felt like, you know, uh, I could probably, you know, because my whole style, you know, up until that point was, you know, it was influenced by the show. Like I, I drew in that whole style, and I was, you know, I drew, I drew Zim and Gur and Dib and Gaz, you know, constantly. Um, but after a certain point, you know, I just felt like, you know, I should maybe, you know, learn how to do some other things, you know, not rearrange stagnant and stuff. So I, I changed my handle to Space Boy originally because um, it was a reference to it, it was Spaceman, which was a reference to a killer song, and then I changed it to Space Boy because I liked how that sounded better, and that was directly influenced by. Um, Smashing Pumpkins and David Bowie both have songs uh, with that name in it, and then I didn't realize until a little bit later that it still works as like a throwback to Zim because that is something that Dib does call Zim on the show. Like he calls him it twice in the show proper, and then that's he actually calls him that in the pilot as well. So as uh, as much as I wanted to kind of uh, sep- you know, let I me mean, not separate myself, but just kind of make myself a bit more distinct for it, it still ended up being like a a, a tie to my kind of my my online roots yeah 
and uh, I, I, I wanted to tell the story. I forgot. I led with it earlier, and then we uh, we changed it to something else. But when we we're talking about the premiere of the show, um, along with Fairly Odd Parents, um, I had recorded that on the VHS, and I I went to a very uh, I went to like a, a I went to a Christian school from like preschool up until fifth grade, and then I transferred to public school after that. So mm-hmm. like it was either in fourth or I think it was fourth grade uh, in two thousand one. Um, I was able to convince my teacher to um, wheel the, you know, like the, the the TV that's like strapped down to like the cart that they wheel into classrooms and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. I was somehow able to convince my teacher to uh, show off that tape um, of the, the Fairly Odd Parents and Zim premiere. And uh, needless to say, I wasn't allowed to uh, screen any more videotapes after that. Because, <laughs> nice. you know, Fairly Odd Parents. trying to convince her it was educational? <laughs> uh I don't even remember. I don't remember how I convinced her to do it. I don't even know what I would have said to like convince. Like I, I honestly don't know. Like, no, I, I, because I couldn't have said it was like, educational in any sense because it wasn't. It was just dumb entertainment. Because I think that fairly odd parents episode. I know th- it's the one where they're stuck in the video game, and then I, I don't remember what the other half of that episode is. Is it where he's like he like. He turns into like an old man or something. I can't. Remember. That might have been it. Yeah. But yeah, maybe. that Zim episode is like, yeah, I've played after that, and then like, I don't even know if we got through like the whole tape. I think maybe we got like, <laughs> yeah, maybe like halfway through or something before she like pulled it out or something. Like I, 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 I remember it played after Fairly Odd Parents, and it, I, it seemed like kids were uh, my classmates were a lot more interested in the Zim portion of the tape, but you know, it didn't get played. So yeah, <laughs> it's funny though. Yeah, um. Um, I, I, I just want to say that, you know, for as short lived as Zim was, um, Nickelodeon has always kind of kept Zim and like his franchise like in like included it in like the Nick, the Nicktoons canon over the years. Um, so he's never like really gone away. Yeah, um, he's popped up like in you know commercials and like video games and stuff. I yeah. distinctly remember I bought um I bought one of those Nick games because I saw like a Zim, Dib, and Gaz were like characters, and it. it was like it wasn't called like Nicktoons Unite or it was something. It was weird like proto Splatoon. I remember you had like a gun and you shot like Nickelodeon slime everywhere. Oh, uh, Party Blast! I think is what you're is that what about. it was? Okay, that was so. it. And uh, I remember buying it on PC, and uh, my PC hated running it, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know how to like fucking mess with the uh, the visual settings or anything back then. So I just yeah. endured it from Zim. Yeah, but it's it's just weird because it's like yeah, Zim has been in all these crossover video games. He's kart racers. Uh, he had a apparently had a had a a, a ride at a, a Nickelodeon theme park in Jersey. Yeah, I just read about that recently. I would love to see what that looked like. Yeah, so I mean, Zim has never really gone away. Um, so it, it's 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 weird that like I feel like Nickelodeon canceled Zim only to realize its potential like a little too late after the fact. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, I guess it worked out in their favor because, you know, they were able to do all these things with the show after the fact and they didn't need to go through with like making any more episodes than they did. As much as that sucks that they they, you know, weren't able to finish like or they got canceled before they were able to finish, you know, any more episodes of season 2, like, right. you know, with all like the money they must have been getting in from all like the, you know, just hot topic alone. But then like, you know, you go down to yeah, all the the other things that they involve the character in the series and like yeah um yeah it's just it's uh i don't think we've actually really talked about the the show proper i mean like i don't know that we really need to go like into plot or anything like i said it's a 20th anniversary of the show like i'm sure if you've been on the internet you've heard of invader sim like you know yeah um, no i, I mean I, I think it's more just like having this appreciation for this like short lived show and like the legacy it has built, uh, over the last 20 years, like, like I said, like as short lived as it was, is it has definitely left an impact on popular culture. Um, so much that like, I'm, I'm re I'm just reading here. Wikipedia 
that like what Zim was able to produce out of it. Like uh, one of the co-creators of Avatar uh, worked on Zim. Um, right. It was, uh, was it Brian? <laughs> Uh, Kanetsko or however he pronounced his last yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. He was like the art director. It was funny because I was watching one of the uh, the special features on the disc and uh, he's on there. Like they're interviewing him about being the art director on Zim and I was like, huh, that name sounds familiar. And I looked him up and I was like, oh my god, that's one of the co-creators of like like At Last Airbender and Korra. Yeah, and um, it's it's saying like, it's like Rebecca Sugar was a fan of it. Rebecca Sugar is def- I've seen her fucking fan art from back. Yeah, when she, she did a bunch of fan art back in the day. So yeah, I mean, just like like people who have been inspired by this show, who came from this show, um, and for better or for worse, just like the uh, community that has come out. I mean, there's. It, I mean, isn't there still a yearly Invader Zim convention every year? Uh, I, is Invader that, Con still going on? I know that I they. So. They did like two physical events, and then yeah, I think like yeah, last year they did it digitally, or or I think this year they did it digitally or something. <laughs> I I know I know that the Invader Con Twitter was doing stuff for the 20th anniversary at the very least. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely certain, but I'm sure you could look that up. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, on the note of Rebecca Sugar, I just remembered she does the forward in uh the the Art of Invader Zim book. Oh, nice. Yeah, and she talks about like her influence and stuff, uh, or the influence the show had on on, on them uh, there too. Um, yeah, so this is definitely something that we should uh, talk about. But like, as far as the show goes, I mean, uh, did you guys like have any particular favorite moments or or episodes or anything? <laughs> uh, like, Go ahead, for, because for me, it was. I, I was when I was rewatching through the show, I was gonna try to rank the episodes from like my favorite to my least favorite, but I honestly can't sh- view this show with like you know unbiased like that. Like I just I love it all. Like I think there's one episode that's called I think Voting of the Doomed that, that I don't care for as much. But other than that one, like it was it's so hard to like. There's definitely some episodes like that I do prefer like a lot, like, um, and it's mostly a lot of the, the, the double length ones, like, uh, attack the hideous new girl and, um, the horrible Xmas of doom and, uh, the Halloween spectacular or the Look, spectacular spooky doom. I, I can kind of agree with you. Like a lot of the show, I feel like at least for me can kind of run together in the sense of just like, because of its style of humor, sometimes it's hard for me to remember like one specific episode to, to pick out like, Oh, I specifically like this. Um, I've always kind of gone to like saying that, uh, uh, tack is my favorite episode just cause it's the one I can remember the most of. Um, mm-hmm. and I just thought that like, you know, having like another invader coming in and trying to like up, uh, upstage Zim basically, I thought was kind of a funny thing. I can, fir- I could probably say that dark harvest is my least favorite because it's fucking gross god dark harvest is amazing though like that's it, one of those, like, shows, one of those like, shows when you go to like show somebody like this is what they were able to get away with like, like that's this episode you that, show that them. is that is it, it is fucking gross i will give it points for originality i will give it i have no idea how the fuck they marketed that to children for anyone unaware uh Dark Harvest basically revolves around Zim stealing the other kids' organs, and he becomes this giant fucking blob of like stolen organs, and it's incredible. And, and, like the organs are falling out of him as well, and he's just doing it because, like, like I think like early in the episode, he's like he gets Zim, head pigeons. Yeah, he gets head pigeons. And his <laughs> squeedly spooch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the humans don't scary. have squeedly spooches. I have a squeedly spooch. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gas has to be a fucking contrarian. Yeah. Um, but no, that episode is just fucking gross. Um, Kyle, what were you going to say? I'd like I'd say my favorite one was Mortos. Mortos, dear soul stealer. Uh-huh. It's weird. Like, whenever I see people talking about the episodes that they hated i always see that one pop up for some reason and like i it, it, that's one of those episodes that's like you know later on that like i didn't remember as well and like rewatching it i'm like there's nothing wrong with this episode this episode is great 
Like yeah. I would say, I would say that that episode's a lot better than like voting of the doom. That one that has like Willie and like Dibs like trying to get him to run against Zim for like uh, the school or like the school pride or something like that. Like I like I said, I, I like the I mean the episode's fine, but you know it it doesn't hold up to like everything else. Like and it's just like a weird like the only misstep for me anyway. I like that one, and then uh, is it? I think it's called like the Walk of Doom, where you get lost in the city and have to go home. Yeah, so that's in a, Mexico. That's, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Zim's going around in his new human disguise, which is like a, a hobo mm-hmm. outfit. Yeah. <laughs> no, God, that's like yeah so many i yeah like i mentioned earlier like i can just i could vividly like quote like a lot of these episodes like you know that one of course the the best moments like when zim's like staring up at the sky and like his eyes start like bubbling over and like he's like (laughs) wait a minute i'm blind like just incredible we, and then, yeah, like you said, the, the fucking ending of the episode where they just like end up in like you know not Mexico because I, from what I read, that was one of those instances of censorship where it was more blatantly like it said "Welcome to Mexico" and stuff, but Nickelodeon was afraid of like getting accused of being racist, so they changed like the the Mexico's uh, thing to just say "Carne," and then like they changed. Apparently, the music was like a lot more like you know like stereotypical like mexican music and then it changed it to kind of like a weird like dancey like you know party tune right it's so obvious there's like a pig head well, a yeah yeah stuff. now what what episode is the one where the um they fucked up the audio track and it has gerd uh, <laughs> screaming that's... across a, a fucking traffic but there's yeah. no traffic sounds that's mortos okay yeah fucking yeah. There, yeah there's that scene they're fucking yelling each other across craft traffic and they got back the fucking <laughs> final scenes and they didn't even have the cars so and they, they kept, left it alone they, they, kept, they kept in all the car sounds and it's just honestly i think it works better than it would have if they got what they wanted because just them yelling across the street with like no nothing around to like <laughs> actually like interrupt the conversation is hilarious there's it's that the- and um <laughs> No, sorry. I'm gonna say it's one of those things like the Dexter's the uh, chubby cheese. Oh yeah, or this completely wrong and it <laughs> makes it even funnier. The script the says the, the script says the audience takes off, and instead of them leaving, it's them actually taking off into the sky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's weird because. <laughs> As a kid, I'd thought nothing of it. I just thought it was like a weird fucking cartoon thing. And then to find out much <laughs> later, to find out much later that it was actually an error that they just rolled with, like, yeah, it's incredible. It makes it much funnier. So, like, the other instance of that happening in Zim is, um, yeah, the, the episode you mentioned, Walk of Doom. Uh, there, there's a character that looks exactly like Zim's uh, human disguise that robs a bank. And fucking uh, Zim shows up to that bank. But before he does, um, there's these cops walking around investigating the crime scene and there's a, a, a shot of a cop walking um, and they got it back and the cop was like way bigger than he should have been. And instead of sending it back to get fixed, they just added thundering like footsteps and they had the, they had like a really deep laugh coming from the guy. And like, <laughs> it's so hilarious. And because like ju- just after that scene, you got Zim showing up and there's the fucking cop going, hey, it's that guy. And he's back for more. Get him. <laughs> like, <laughs> like as far as like front to back, like scenes in the show that are like perfect. That's definitely that scene in Walk of Doom is like one of them. Uh, uh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Like I said, there's just there's so many great moments in the show that I, I obviously I can't go through them all. We'll be here all night, but like I'm just thinking of stuff like um, like uh, uh, yeah, like I said, it, it, it's just so hard to pick like specific ones to talk about. Like no, like man, like I I feel like there's only I I, I can't even specify which ones, but I feel like there's only maybe one uh, like. A small handful of episodes that are like I wouldn't even say duds uh just like maybe not as up to par as the rest of them but sure I mean most of them like are are pretty well remembered <laughs> yeah 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 like and, and that's the benefit of them only having the amount of episodes that they have is that they they definitely like it, it the the 
the, the quality and everything is just is incredible. I mean, Zim Zim has hands down one of the best episodes. <laughs> Had uh, one of the best what? Christmas episodes. Oh yeah, no, that fucking. I mean, shit. If we were just talking about like the most iconic like holiday songs in all of animation, you know, bow down, bow down before the power of Santa. Like it's incredible. That's good shit right there. Well, and plus that episode has the greatest character in all of Zim. It has uh, Mini Moose. <laughs> Mini Moose, who's, who's been there the whole time. <laughs> Which is another one of those things that's like Minnie Moose is actually a character that was supposed to. So that holiday episode was supposed to happen much later in season two. But when they found out they're getting canceled, they fast tracked that episode to be like the last show of this of the show. Um, and Minnie Moose was actually a character that was supposed to show up some episodes before that happened. Um, and he was supposed to become like a. a a main fixture in uh, uh, season three, well, whatever that would have ended up being along with that. I know that Scooge was supposed to end up being like a main character on the show too. Like, I think the tallest were going to send him down to like, um, be, become a hindrance of like Zim's plots and stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, I know the, the holiday episodes are great. Um, yeah. Like I mentioned that the Halloween episode, uh, another great holiday episode for them. Um, that one has, that one has a scene that's, uh, that always sticks with me is uh, there's, this, there's, Dib runs into he runs into a nightmare version of uh of Gaz and Professor Membrane. And uh the professor oh, that's right. I forgot about the nightmare world in the yeah. uh the professor grabs him with like one hand and like he's uh taking him to uh the nightmare miss bitters and like he's passing by the camera and you just hear like in a very spooky like you know Roger Bumpus voice him going I'm floating <laughs> like <laughs> it's just so good. And um, I, I honestly think that like the sense of humor for the show really helped offset the sometimes horrifying uh, art design of this show. Oh yeah, no, I mean like, God, I, I feel like this show is like it, it's the animation equivalent of like a David Fincher movie. It's like everything's just so like dirty and like unkept and like. It's just, uh, and sometimes just very upsetting to look at. <laughs> like it's very just, upsetting to look at a lot of the time. Yeah, and it's again that just sort of like is just a, another it's just a visual like uh, I don't want to say hallmark exactly, but it's just like another visual like quirk of the series. And, and it's just one of those things like everything is working in tandem though with like how you know the the, the show looks how the voices are performed, you know, very, you know, manically, just like, you know, all the time, like there's, it's never off. Like everyone's always screaming and just yelling nonsense. And in the case of like, you know, Gur, like, you know, very random things. Um, and then you got like, you know, you know, the music by uh, uh, Kevin Manthe, that just like, you know, it's one of those things where I, I feel like the music attributed so much to the show, like the show wouldn't, definitely not be the same without uh his score and i know oh, no, because, yeah. like zim has go, a very unique uh score if you go back and you watch like the pilot uh it's done by somebody else not by him and um it works for the pilot but like if you listen to that and you imagine like the show proper sounding like it like it just doesn't seem right no like, zim just has this very like hard driving industrial yeah, a lot like of in, metal clanging. A lot of like industrial, like electronic, like mm -hmm. sound work to it. Um, another thing that's hard to imagine is uh, anyone but Richard Horvitz doing Zim. Like there is uh, the pilot that has Billy West doing it. It's very strange. <laughs> it is very strange, but also much stranger. And I don't know if there's any evidence of this cut online, but apparently excuse me, there is a version of that pilot with Mark Hamill doing the voice. And I would love to hear what like Mark would have done with the, uh, with the character like Zim after, you know, cause you know, you think the character Zim's or uh, <laughs> you think your character is that Mark's voiced, you know, like the Joker and uh, you know, that sort of thing. And like, I imagine he would have had a very uh, interesting take on him. He and it's like those deep voices. So it would have been like skips or Joker or something. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know that that was, 
yeah i don't know that would necessarily fit but like like again i just i'm very interested um yeah jd made the joke earlier when i mentioned that but uh we should get uh hashtag release the hamel cut <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to try to get that version of the pilot out um that'd be very funny but yeah um yeah, like I mentioned, you got uh, Roger Bumpus as, uh, as Professor Membrane, who is more well known as doing uh, Squidward on uh, SpongeBob. Yeah. Uh, you got Melissa Fawn as uh, Gaz, who's you know done tons of voice work. Uh, Which is prom- really funny because I technically have like I- I'm looking behind me. I have her um, her autograph on a picture. It's from Digimon, but I do oh, have her she- autograph on the wall behind me. Oh, okay. Um, I mostly know her from doing Ed on Cowboy Bebop and then doing um, mm-hmm. D- Dendy on OKKO. OK right. Yeah, um, she was a she character on the third season, which... Uh, but yeah, yeah, she's she's great. Yeah, and then, of course, Richard Horvitz, you know, who's, you know, he's done, you know, Daggett on the Angry Beavers, and he's, you know, done Billy on, you know, Grim Adventures. Um, and then Andy Berman, who I don't really I, th- I think this might be the only thing i've ever heard him on like i'm sure he's done other voice work but uh i mean you know he captures that like manic uh conspiracy nut like you know thing mm-hmm. with dib like so well like like i said just all the performances across the board just fit their characters and we it's can't just... we can't we can't rem- uh forget about ricky yeah ricky simons as a uh, girl who definitely as far as i know didn't do voice work before that because uh, ricky just worked on the show as like a colorist i think or a storyboard artist uh something yeah. like that something like uh, that. it's funny because i think i read that jonan specifically wanted somebody who un- uh, inexperienced to do gur to reflect uh gur's kind of character you know he's a very you know he's he's put together with like nuts and you know <laughs> loose nuts and bolts and trash and like you know his brain is literally trash yeah and so he wanted some uh inexperienced voice actor to kind of reflect that and uh you know of course they put like you know uh, high pitch and like modulation and stuff but uh yeah no R- ricky's perfect for gur and all this you know nonsensical you know uh, exclamations of you know different like uh fast foods and animals and shit yeah um ricky does also does uh um bloaty uh for bloaty's pizza hog and i think he's great when he does that too mm-hmm. although th- there's a note on that too so um this is definitely something i didn't mention on the floor for this episode because i had completely forgot about it um i met jonan once oh yeah i i met him i went to comic-con in 2009 and in 2011 and I think this might have been 2011 because I imagine it must have been like they must have been doing like some 10th anniversary of Zim thing there. Um, it was one of those things that I couldn't get like a ticket to or anything. But I ran into him like in a hall somewhere, and um, I had remembered a tweet they uh, made earlier in the day that he was quoting like Bloaty. And uh, when I met him, I was just like, "Oh my God, hi, Joan!" And um, you know, big fan, blah blah blah. But, like uh, I was reading uh, your tweets earlier, and uh, I thought it was very funny. And he was because I think he just typed something like uh, I eat too many pizza. <laughs> and so I brought it up and he was like, oh, yeah, no, I just uh, I, I, I ate too many pizza. <laughs> like and, <laughs> and it was just such a weird moment. But yeah, it was so cool to meet him. Um, I was so disappointed for a long time because I I took a picture with him and I thought it was lost. But um, I actually came across it like uh, just a few months ago. Nice. Um, so I'm glad I have like a visual proof <laughs> that I met him. Like, you know, one of my favorite creators of all time, like, you know, that, that would have been something very disappointing to lose. So I'm definitely yeah. going to get that backed up in multiple spaces and get it printed out and blown up and uh, put on my wall and uh, stare it at when I go to sleep at night. There you go. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what Jonan is doing artist uh, these days, but I do know he has become like a very active Twitch streamer. Yeah. He's definitely like, at least like in the last, like, couple of weeks he's been doing like q a streams specifically about zim uh while he plays like you know um i'm not sure what he's playing it's, it's, it's i don't know there was, or... I... was an episode he was with uh ricky and he did a bunch of invader zim fan games oh on dreams <laughs> like on playstation yeah. 4 yeah <laughs> yeah that was yeah. fun you can find like a a highlight reel of that on youtube and it's great uh it's super funny um 
because I think oh, he, he also with Horvitz, I think too, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah that yeah. was yeah with Horvitz, and that was great. Um, but yeah, no, he's very active on the Twitch, and oh, well, he does like drawing streams and stuff too. Like, yeah. um, he does uh, drawing with the my my uh, one of my friends that I made back it, on like the old Invader Zim, you know. Uh, forums and stuff my friend g um he actually uh, her, she and him like do drawing streams and stuff on there so that's cool. it's um uh, yeah no and you know shout out to g like you know she saw her dream come true like you know she uh you know she's be- she's just animating like on a lot of these you know cartoons and stuff now and i know that like you know i knew her back when you know we were just like zim you know uh fans so to see uh one of us you know go on to uh you know greatness and actually get the you know regularly you know interact with like the creator of one of our favorite shows is like been you know it warms my heart to see so you Matt, know. are you saying this podcast is not a point of greatness for- <laughs> well listen i'm i'm glad to <laughs> I'll, let's just i'll put it this way i'm very glad to be talking about this show on this podcast yeah. with you two um so or i guess I, do- I guess more the after thing is to say is that i'm glad to predominantly be talking over everyone with like a bunch of <laughs> stupid bullshit from my no, life that's fine, man. <laughs> I, I i knew when you put this on the schedule like Ma- matt is gonna that's yeah fine. <laughs> um but something i do want to know about is because i have never read the the new comics they put out like do you like what how do you feel about the new comics and like what like what kind of storylines have like did they like carry on to um when they started doing those so as far as i know well, okay so specifically the first episode is the inspiration for into the florpus like it's right. al- it's almost like a direct adaptation to it to a certain point and then they kind of just goes off and does its own thing for the movie um as far as the comics go, I think there's only one plot in there that is taken from a scrapped or an episode of Zim that didn't get made. It was called, um, I think it was just called Pants. Uh, <laughs> and it was, and it had to do with like, um, like mind control pants or something like that. And I, I remember they didn't end up doing it on the show proper because Jimmy Neutron's like pilot episode was based around oh, that. Oh yeah. So that was interesting to see that, that that was something that they were finally able to do like in the comic that they were not allowed to do in the show because it was too close to one of the other, you know, Nick properties. Right. Um, right. As far as I know, I think pretty much all the other things are just made specifically for the comic. But I mean, you got like people that worked on the show, working on the comic that too, like Joan, it does, you know, things here and there on the show. He does like covers and writes some of the stuff, but I believe it's like, it's mostly, like Eric Trueheart, I think, uh, writes the comic, and you know he worked on the original show as well. Um, nice. But yeah, and there's tons of other people too. And then a lot of those people that worked on uh, that have been working on this new comic went on to work on uh, Enter the Florpus. So you know, that's a, another reason why, like, I think they decided to go with like the the, the style of the comics for the the movie, just because you know it was a it was a natural progression of it, sort of. Right. Because after that point, because I think. Yeah, the comic started in 2015, so the comic would have been running for like three years before they started doing Into the Florpus. So you know, three years but, is like you know a lot longer than you know the show even ran for. So right, but would you say like the comic is like a like a logical continuation of the show? I would say just based solely on the fact that the background of Joan and is you know steeped in comics. Like when I heard that zim was going to be you know coming back as a comic i was like that makes sense and i'm glad because it runs it it runs contrary to kind of my feelings on that sort of thing where a lot of times when uh like shows or movies like they get canceled like they will end up doing like a comic to sort of continue the plot or something like i know they did that for like buffy the vampire slayer and like um some mm-hmm. other shit like that and i always felt like you know it's and, and it's you know comics is a certain you know it's a medium and some things work for it and some things don't but because because jonan's you know background is it's so you know the, the comics are so you know tied to it it just seemed like a natural thing and okay. i was you know definitely down for it well around that time they also had a uh a rocco comic uh rugrats comic 
they like started bringing everything back as uh, comic forms. Which, oh I shit! Think, I don't think any of them did well. Right, and then uh, I mean Zim at least got to like you know fifty issues. So yeah, um, fifty issues, not counting the because they got to fifty, and then like the Invader Zim comic, you know, after that point was done. But they've done or are going to be uh, up to uh, four issues of Invader Zim quarterly. And um, they'll be doing like a trade paperback of that. But then, yeah, Jonan's going to be doing one final issue to sort of cap off the whole comic series. Um, and I think that comes out later in the year, like in uh, August, I think, or like September or something around then. So uh, it only makes sense that, you know, they cap off the, uh, the the comic series with, you know, the 20th anniversary of the show passing, you know, it's uh, especially with, you know, John and getting involved with the comic again too. So, but yeah, the comics definitely worth checking out. Like if, if you love Zim and you haven't read the comics, definitely check it out. Cause it just, it, you know, it maintains that same energy that the show has. And, you know, you can easily imagine, you know, just listening to the characters, you know, voices in your head and like, you know, the, everything else, like it just, uh, Yeah. It's um, as much as I would love to see more content produced for Zim. Like I'm glad that we got into the Florpus. Like you know, it was so great to see you know another TV movie again. But honestly, at this point, I feel like if we didn't get any more Zim content, like ever again after the the comics are up, like I would honestly be I would be fine with it. Like there's now this entire you know legacy left over. Like you know. The, all the comics and the show and the movie and stuff now that I I feel like we're in a better spot than we were when, you know, obviously when it got canceled and it was just, you know, uh, cut, cut bef- you know, it ended before its time, I feel. Um, you gotcha. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it, it was, it was nice to rewatch the show front to back uh, for the show again and, uh, you know, definitely to reminisce about old memories related to the show and the impact it had on my life. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 just it's Zim like uh, yeah yeah it's it's definitely an oddity from an, from a different time. Um, I think if there's any kids today that have not seen it, I think it's definitely like if you want to know the weird shit that went down in the early 2000s, probably a good litmus test right there. Um, yeah, I I honestly I I honestly would recommend Zim for just like. If you just want to see something fucking weird that like, how did this ever get made for children? It's definitely worth a watch on that merit alone. Um, yeah. But like you were saying, like most people our age ish uh, grew up with this show, and I mean, I know how fucking weird it is. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully, there's any uh, listeners that we've gotten that has absolutely no idea what Zim is because uh, they're just going to think that th- this whole entire episode is just, oh, well, what the show? What is the show about? Like, I, I know like how this made the- these guys. If you've feel, never seen but- Zim. God help you. Go go watch Zim. Just go yeah. watch it. It's it's on Paramount Plus, I believe. Uh, I I think you can get the episodes on YouTube as well, uh, renting or buying or any of that stuff. Uh, just any way you can watch them. Uh, the DVDs, I'm sure you can get DVDs of them still out there. You know, just uh, any way that you can experience it. Go buy the comics. You know, uh, I do. I actually do want to go um, check out the comics after this because I I've been to read them for, years, but just never got around to it. They are well worth reading for for Zim fans, and even for non Zim fans, like it's it's okay. still very much got that same DNA in it. So I th- I think it translates very well to the printed medium. Nice. And then again, also there's the Art of Invaders Zim book, which is like you know, oh, yeah. uh, it talks about the show and like the you know the Jonan's origins, you know, pre Invader Zim, and it has stuff about the comics in there, and it has stuff about the movie in there. So it's it's a very sort of like full package about you know talking about all things Zim in there. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, God, I feel like. Yeah, we've definitely. <laughs> I think we we definitely talked about more, or at least I did. I talked about more about uh, uh, Zim experiences more so than the show itself. But I'm, I think I'm glad was, I'm glad you got that out of your system. <laughs> I think that just it gives more people more reason to just check out the show on their own because, like, we didn't even talk about we only talked about like a a few episodes or you know a handful of episodes, but like there's so yeah. many more out there like that it was worth watching. So yeah, definitely, sure. y'all out there. 
just check out the, the the series in any way you can through either the comics or the cartoons um and then once you do that um you know uh, come find us on facebook or twitter or discord and uh tell us what you liked about it uh what you were frightened about it as a kid or favorite <laughs> characters favorite plots uh you know definitely on our discord hit us up because uh, i will talk all day with you about all things zim on there um he will he will he'll 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 talk your ear off yeah and then um God help you if this is your first episode uh, listening to the Ink and podcast. But if it is, thank you for listening <laughs> to all <of> this. <laughs> um, if you uh, are listening to us, uh, Jesus. Oh, God. Well, I think Kyle is being succumbed to some sort of demon or alien. So. <laughs> I think it was the spirit of Zim came out. <laughs> the spirit of the show. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, if you uh, uh, want to listen to more of us, uh, we are on YouTube, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts, we're on uh, Spotify, you know, all your major streaming services, you can listen to us on there. And on YouTube specifically, you know, uh, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, leave us a comment, uh, all this stuff that the YouTubers say now it is. You shill. <laughs> well, you'd be doing it if I weren't. Nah. Yeah, yes, you would. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining us in this uh, 20th anniversary discussion of Invader Zim. And uh, hopefully you'll uh, listen to us next week as we cover something else very cool. Yeah. No, I think Kyle did die. No, he's still over there. No, I think I hear, only hear dog noises. I think he got mauled. I think he's dead. Thanks for listening. You can find all the links to our social media pages in the episode description. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and join our Discord. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. The Ink and Paint Club is happy to be part of the Geekly Grind Podcast Network. We'll see you next time.